Servicent events, or SSE, let your server push real-time updates to web clients using just JavaScript on the front end. They're perfect for live data like news, scores, stock prices, or dashboards. Normally with HTTP requests, it's the client or the browser that asks for the data, and the server only responds when it's asked. Each request is separate and happens independently. But with server sent events, it's different. Once a client connects, the server can keep that connection open and send updates whenever it wants. No need for the client to keep polling. This is great for keeping users updated in real time. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to set this up in Flask using the Flask SSE extension. All right, let's get started building this example with Flask SSE. So let me begin by showing you what I have. I have a virtual environment set up. I haven't installed anything yet, but the virtual environment is ready to go. It's already active. I have this app.py. I'm just going to keep things simple with app.py in this video. I'm not gonna create like a folder or blueprints or anything. Everything is going to go inside of this app.py. And then finally, I have docker-compose.yaml. This just sets up a Redis instance because Flask SSE needs Redis to work. So the idea is I will publish a message and it will be stored on Redis temporarily and then Flask SSE will read that message and then send it to all the connected clients. So that's what I need Redis for. So I can just do docker compose up dash D and that will start Redis in the background for me. So I don't have to do anything with it. I just need to have it available on a particular port and that's what I have. So now let me install what I need for this example. First, I need to install Flask. Then I'll need Flask SSE, G Unicorn, and then finally G event. So let's go ahead and install those four things and wait for that to finish. Okay, so everything is ready. So now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna run my app with G-Unicorn. So I'm not going to use a typical Flask development server to run my app because that's not going to work with Flask SSE. There's going to be like a second process that is going to be running that will send out all the messages for the service and events. So I can't run that with the Flask development server. I need to use G-Unicorn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna type in the command to make sure it works. So G-Unicorn should be available because I installed it. So it says no application module specified, so we know that it's installed. Then I need to tell it the name of the file, so app, and then the name of the app object inside of the file, which is also app. And then I wanna do dash K to change the way that it runs, because I wanna change it to use G event instead of just the default process. So now if I hit enter, we see that it is working. Then I can go to this endpoint, this URL, localhost port 8000 and we see nothing is found because I haven't defined any routes yet, but we see that G Unicorn is working. And just keep in mind that when you're using G Unicorn, the app won't automatically restart, so we'll have to stop and start it manually. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna bring in the SSC extension. So I can do from flask underscore SSE, import SSE. And the way this is set up is with a blueprint. So I won't have any blueprints defined myself, but I'm going to use the blueprint from SSE. So app.registerBlueprint, and then you just pass in SSE, and then you need to supply a URL prefix, and we'll call ours stream, so slash stream. And note that using Flask SSE is different than most Flask extensions where you have to initialize the extension by calling init app. For this, you don't have to do that, you're just registering a blueprint, so it's pretty easy to use. Next, we wanna add some configuration. So what we need to configure is the Redis URL, so Flask SSE can connect to the Redis instance that I started with Docker Compose. So remember that the port is 6379. So the Redis location will just be localhost. And because 6379 is the default port for Redis, I don't have to put anything here. I can put 6379 if I want to here. It doesn't make a difference, but 6379 is the default. So I'm just gonna leave it like this to keep it simple. Next, I want to create a route to display a page because that's where the visual part of our app comes into play. So I'll do app.route, and this is just gonna be on the index. And then I'll call the function index, and it is going to return a template called index.html. So I need to import render template, and then I can create a templates directory. And inside of that templates directory, I can create the index.html. I have Emmet installed on my system, so I can easily create the scaffolding for an HTML document. And inside of the title, I want server sent events as a title. And then inside of the body, 
I want to specify some JavaScript. So I'm going to put the script tags inside of the body. I'm not going to visually display anything quite yet. So I'll set up the index template to accept server sent events first, and then I'll set it up to where it can do something useful. So let's set it up first. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create an event source. So I'll name this variable source, and then I need to instantiate a class called event source. So new and then event source. And then this takes in the URL for the stream. So remember the stream was defined here with this URL prefix. What I can do is I can use URL for, so URL for, and then this will be sse.stream. And then this will generate the correct URL for me. So I don't have to put it in manually, but you could if you wanted to. And then I'll just put a semicolon at the end. And then I need to create an event listener for the source that I just created. So source and then add event listener. And then the event that I'm listening for is message. So there are other events like connected, but I just want message. And then I'll define an anonymous function and it's going to have a single parameter event. So this event is going to have the information about the message. So in here, I'll create a variable called data and I'll just do json.parse because this will be in JSON form. So json.parse event.data, right? So I'm going to send JSON over and then I'm going to parse it here on the front end. And then all I want to do is I want to alert this. So I'll just do message and then plus and then data dot message, right? So this is enough for the front end. So let me go ahead and restart my app. And let me go to the browser and load the page. So we see the page is here. There's nothing on the browser page because I didn't put anything. There's nothing in the body, it's just the script. And then what I can do is I can use the Flask shell to publish messages as long as the app is running. So let me open up a new terminal, turn on bash, and then turn on my virtual environment. And then I'll just do Flask shell. And then in here, I need to import SSE from the app. So from app import SSE. And the reason why I'm doing it here is because this SSC has been registered to the app. I can't do from Flask SSE import SSE because that's not attached to anything. So this SSE is attached to the Flask app. And then what I can do is I can do SSE.publish. And then the JSON is going to be message as a key. And then I'll say hello there. And then I'll give it a type of message, okay? So now ssc.publish, and now we see on my other screen message hello there. So this message came over just fine because I was sending it from the Flask shell and the app is running in the other terminal. So it was able to read that message from Redis and then send it over to all the connected clients and there was only one connected client. So if you want, you can change the type, uh, you can change the structure of the message it's pretty straightforward, like type can be different types of messages, maybe like a score or a stock update or a particular stock symbol, depending on how you wanna do it. But for this video, we'll keep it really simple. So this is the, the message body and then this is just the text of the message. So now let's make this example a little more interesting. Let's go over to the index and let's bring in chart.js. So I'll bring in chart.js and I'll just put it inside of the head and then I'll create a div that holds a chart. So inside the div, I need to use a canvas ID. I'll say my chart as the ID and then canvas. So this is where my chart will be created. And then inside of the script, what I can do is first, let me comment out this stuff. Inside the script, I can go ahead and create my chart. So to do that, I'll do context. So this is just convention to use a variable called context. So context, and then I used to get the element. So document get element by ID, and this will be my chart. So once I have that, then I can create the chart. So const chart, we need to instantiate chart. And then the first argument to it will be the element. So context, and then inside of here, I can pass in some settings. 
So the type of chart that I want to use is a donut chart. So dough nuts spelled British style. And then the data that I want to have will have a certain form. So first I can specify two labels. So I'll just name them colors. So purple and orange, right? So two things, you can have as many as you like. And then for data sets here, you pass in a list. And what I need to supply is a label. So this will be number of votes. I need to pass in some data, some initial data. This is going to change. So just one in one, meaning it's gonna be 50% for purple, 50% for orange. And then I want background color. So a background color for the first thing will be a purple. So that's going to be RGB. And then 128, zero, 128. So that's a purple. And then for the orange, we'll do RGB, and then that's gonna be 255, 165, and zero. So that should be an orange, and then that's it. So let me restart the app to make sure my chart is working. So let's go back here and refresh. Okay, so we see the chart, it's pretty big, so let me bring in some styles. So I'll go up to the head section, and I'll put a style tag here. And then for the body, I'll just say display flex, uh, justify content center, align items center. So this is just to center it. And then we'll say height will be 100 view units. So that is full screen. And then the margin will be zero. We don't need any margins for this. So let me restart the app and then go back here and refresh. And now we see that the chart is a lot smaller, it's in the center, and it's easy to read. And we see here, purple has one vote and orange has one vote. So this isn't very interesting yet because this won't change, but the idea is that every time something happens, the screen can be updated to reflect that, which we'll see in a moment. So after the chart, what I wanna do is I want to listen for the stream again. So let me just copy this. Well, oh, actually, I'll just use the same source, but I'll use a different event listener. And I'll define the event listener down here. So add event listener, and we'll call this votes. So it's not message. And then we need to define the anonymous function. And then what I want to do in here is I want to grab the data just like before. So json.parse and then event data. So same thing. But the data, of course, is going to be different. And the data is going to be in a form where I can just directly inject it to the charts. So I can do chart.data.datasets zero.data equals data.votes. All right, so this is just how the data is laid out in the chart. So if we look here, data and then data sets, we have a list with one thing. And then dot data, we're updating this with data.votes, whatever that is going to be. And then I can do chart.update. Okay, so my front end is ready to receive new information and update the screen with it, but I haven't created the back end part for where this data actually comes from. So let me go ahead and do that. So let's go over to app.py. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a command to do this. So the command is going to be something that I can run similar to how I ran the Flask shell, but for this I can do it all in one go instead of importing things. So what I'll do is first I'll import click. So click is a library that has to do with creating things for the command line. And then what I can do is I can take the app object, use the decorator, app.cli.command, and I want this command to be called update votes. And then I need to supply some arguments. So I wanna update the number of votes for purple and the number of votes for orange. So I can do click, arguments, and then purple. So that will be one argument. And then click, argument, orange will be the other. And then I can define the function. So update votes, and then we'll have purple be one and orange be one by default. So if I don't supply any actual vote numbers, it will just default to one and one. And then let me just print this out just to show you how this works. So purple and orange. So let me go over here and exit out of the shell. And let me stop the server. Okay, so here what I can do is I can do flask update votes and we see missing argument purple, right? So if I do one and two, we see one and two as the 
result. If I do five and 10, we see five and 10 here. So now we just need to change this to actually update the votes. So instead of printing, I'll use ssc.publish, and then I need to supply a JSON object with the information I need, so votes. So the first thing will be purple, and the second thing will be orange, and then the type will be votes. So remember, I'm listening for this votes here in the event listener. So let me go ahead and save this. And to make this a little more visually clear, let me bring the browser over. All right, so now if I call update votes with five and 10, let's see what happens. Well, first I need to start my server. So let me start the server here. And then let me do update votes. So update, so flask update votes, let's do 10 and 20. And we see the chart on the right immediately updates. So if I do flask update votes, let's say two and 50, it should be more extreme. So mostly orange. If I update this to be, let's say two and zero, it should be completely purple. And we see that it's working. So regardless of the numbers I put in here, it's going to figure out how much of the chart should be for each color. So let's do 34 and 72. And it looks like that. So we see the app is updating and is reacting to whatever the server is sending. The app isn't asking for this, it's just waiting for something to come across the network and once it receives it, it updates the chart because I'm using chart.js and I can easily call dot update. So that's it for this video. I just want to introduce you to server sent events. Uh, this may be better for your app than WebSockets. So if you are using WebSockets and your clients aren't communicating with the server, then I highly recommend switching over to server sent events. And if you wanna learn more about WebSockets or anything in Flask, I have other videos on that. So check those out on my channel.